Hey there. So I was going to put up a lame post about how I've been really busy and I haven't gotten the video out and so forth. And then I said to myself, hello, you have a YouTube channel. You could just make a video that explains why you haven't had it come out with a video recently and giving people a little bit of a peek into what the life is like of a uh, mid-career astronomer. So uh, I don't know if this will be a lot of, a lot of interest to people, but this is uh, what I've been up to the last few weeks. So. Uh, I am what we call soft money. My official position is a research professor. What that means is that I don't have guaranteed funding and the funding I have has to be secured on a rolling basis. Most of my funding comes from the Neil Garrel Swift Gamma Ray Burst Mission. I'm in the Mission Operations Center right now. Uh, this is a mission that has been going for 19 years, closing in on 20, that studies uh, gamma ray bursts, which are the biggest explosions in the universe, and the birth pings of black holes. I'll probably do a video talking about gamma ray bursts and so forth at some point. And that provides the bulk of my funding. The rest of it comes from uh, occasional research grants and the occasional teaching stint that fills in uh, what's left of my funding. So a lot of the, what I've been doing the last few weeks is connected to either my role at SWIFT or my need to uh, continue to fund myself uh, through other means. So three weeks ago, I went to a conference that was on the 50 years of gamma ray bursts. Uh, gamma ray bursts were actually discovered in the 1960s, but the first paper was in 1973 that reported their existence. Uh, so this was the first conference I had attended since the beginning of the pandemic, uh, probably since, uh, since at least 2019, if not 2018. And it was just a lot of fun. Uh, there were really good talks. There was a lot of talk about the theory of gamma ray bursts and what we've learned over the last few years and future missions that might study gamma ray bursts and a whole session on the, the boat, the brightest of all time, the burst that went off last year that Swift observed that uh, we've learned a lot about gamma ray bursts from. And so just a really uh, fun conference and meeting a lot of my colleagues I hadn't seen for four or five years and so forth. And uh, everyone seems to be aging well except me, I guess. Uh, but it was a really nice experience to go there and listen to all these talks and see how the field has progressed. Gamma ray bursts are not my bread and butter. While I work for this mission and do occasional work on them, most of my work is on uh, hot stellar populations or hot stars that are in nearby galaxies, globular clusters, open clusters, the Magellanic Clouds in particular. I don't keep up with the state of the art on gamma ray bursts except when I go to these conferences. And so hearing how our work here has advanced the field and uh, enhanced our understanding of these explosions was uh, really a lot of fun. Um, and then uh, I've been doing a lot of work with spacecraft management. Uh, I can't go into the details. Some of it is public that we've talked about. Uh, we've publicly announced that the spacecraft is having some issues. Um, we're trying to work those out, but there's a lot of work to be doing with connected with that. I am the instrument lead for the ultraviolet optical telescope, one of the three telescopes on SWIFT. And so uh, it's kind of, UVUT has a tendency to be kind of the canary in the coal mine when there's a problem with the spacecraft because it's probably the most sensitive to what's going on. Uh, and so, uh, a lot of my time has been recently analyzing that data to try to gain insight into what problems we may be having and uh, hopefully uh, helping to uh, feed more intelligent people than I am who know way more about spacecraft the answers to the issues that we're facing. And so that's been occupying my, a lot of my time. And then this week in particular, I have a grant deadline coming up uh, tomorrow, actually. I'm just taking a break in between writing grants. I've actually submitted one and I'm working on a second. These are small grants that... Uh, uh, do very small research projects uh, for one year with the SWIFT spacecraft. And uh, so I put in every now and then to do some of my uh, work. I won't talk specifically about what I've been proposing for a very good reason. The proposals process is what we call double blind. When you see the proposals, you don't know who the proposers are and they don't know who you are. And that's to avoid bias and that sort of thing and favoritism in the selection process. I've been on both sides of it now. And so uh, there are criticisms that people have made at it, but I think it actually works pretty well uh, in terms of getting a very fair evaluation of science cases. But uh, so I won't talk specifically about the proposals I'm making, just in case someone who ends up on a committee watches my videos and is like, oh, I know who proposed this. This was Siegel. And so uh, I'll, I'll keep that a little quiet until after we've gotten the results uh, uh, from that. But um, so writing a proposal involves figuring out what science question you want to answer, figuring out what targets you want to observe, checking that you haven't already observed those targets and can do it from archival data, then figuring out what kind of observations you need, putting together an observing plan that the science planners can then execute with uh, 
hopefully minimal input from you, although some of them they have to, we have to be very involved because they're very specifically timed. One of the things that Swift excels at is science, what we call science in the time domain, where you have things that are happening on a very short time scale, and so you, I need to have very carefully coordinated observations, sometimes with ground-based facilities or other space-based facilities that will uh, allow you to gain more insight into whatever the phenomenon is you're studying. And so, uh, and so you have to put it together a plan for that and how to organize that. And so uh, that's a lot of it's a lot of time and just writing the thing. I mean, it's a for even the small proposals, it's a four page proposal, which actually you usually go over the limit and then have to sort of pare it down and like remove lots of adjectives uh, to get it into that time basis because scientists like to talk about science. So we tend to write long uh, uh, proposals and there's tend to be lots of figures and so forth. So uh, I have uh, one proposal in, as I said, and uh, I'm working on a second proposal now. And uh, hopefully we get this uh, uh, submitted, uh, the draft out tonight and then submitted tomorrow before the deadline. And so after that, I'll be going back to uh, finishing up a couple of videos I've been working on. I actually had a, an, an Ahsoka reaction video. And uh, the main thing I'm working on is the Apollo 13 reaction video where I talk a lot about space travel and, and so forth. So uh, those will be coming out in the next few weeks. But just thought I'd, I'd drop a little video letting you know what uh, what I'm up to and what life is like when you're an actual mid-career astronomer trying to uh, stay afloat. So uh, hopefully you found that interesting. Uh, if not, hey, there'll be more videos coming. Uh, until then, uh, I'm Mike Siegel. I write for Ordinary Times. Thank you for watching.